नमस्कार इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट थ्री को थिंग्स फर्स्ट द पार्ट्स ऑफ द ऑट्री सिस्टम सेकेंड हाउ डू वी हेयर थर्ड द टाइप्स ऑफ हेयरिंग लॉस पार्ट्स ऑफ द ऑट्री सिस्टम देर आर सिक्स पार्ट्स ऑफ द ऑट्री सिस्टम from an audiological perspective the sixth part include part 1 that is the external ear the external ear which is a speciality of the mammals in many sense starts from the pinna goes into the external auditory meatus and ends at the tympanic membrane so three parts of the external ear pinna external auditory meatus and the tympanic membrane the next part of the auditory system is the middle ear the middle ear begins from the tympanic membrane has six walls three bones malleus incus and stapes two muscles tensor tympani and stapedius two tendons and ends at the inner ear the inner ear has three core parts the semicircular canals the vestibuli and the cochlea after the inner ear begins the tube through which the auditory nerve goes this tube is known as the internal auditory meatus it contains the auditory nerve the auditory nerve goes and joins the central auditory pathway which has various substations these substations can be remembered easily through a mnemonic c n s limca c n s l i m c a c n starts for stands for cochlear nucleus S stands for superior olivary complex L stands for lateral lemniscus I stands for inferior colliculus M stands for medial jejunit body and C stands for the auditory cortex The central auditory pathway has two parts one is the ascending pathway which takes information up and the second is the descending pathway which brings information down and the auditory system ends out at the auditory cortex which is located in the sylvian fissure or the lateral sulcus of the temporal lobe and is known as the heschel's gyrus the first part of the video ends out which says there are six parts of the auditory system which includes the external ear which includes the middle ear which includes the inner ear The next part is the retrocochlear pathway, the central auditory mechanism having the ascending and descending pathways, and the auditory cortex inside the lateral sulcus. Once we have divided the ear into so many parts, we need to understand how we hear. So that is the next segment of the video. How do we hear? Let's take an example. There's a squeaky toy which produces a sound. The sound is collected by the external ear, pushed into the external auditory meatus. The tympanic membrane is vibrated. These vibrations are picked up by the three ossicles or bones known as malleus, incus and stapes. The vibrations are pushed into the inner ear through a oval window and there is a vibration in the fluid filled cavity of the inner ear these vibrations are converted into electrical impulses by this part of the inner ear known as the cochlea it is essential to convert out the vibrations into electricity because the auditory system or the brain can sense only electrical impulses those are nerve impulses so in true sense actually hearing happens from here where the mechanical sounds are converted into electricity 
These are collected from the different turns of the cochlea by the auditory nerve which is housed inside this retrocochlear pathway known as the internal auditory meatus. The nerves come out and join the substations. The first substation is the cochlear nucleus, superior olivary complex, lateral lemniscus, inferior colliculus, medial genicular body up to the cortex. These substations process out the sounds in different ways. It's into common experience that when we are hearing to somebody in the presence of noise, we can tune ourselves up and hear only to the person rejecting out the noise. This activity is done by the active interaction of this particular part, which is known as the central auditory pathway, consisting of the ascending pathway, which takes in information based upon what we want to hear and the feedback given by the auditory cortex. It comes down down into the cochlea into the middle ear and again the entire system is retuned thus the central auditory pathway is responsible to give us clear hearing finally the collected sound the sound converted into electrical nerve impulses processed out is delivered to the auditory cortex and the auditory cortex makes a sense out of the sound that the sound came in from a squeaky toy and it's a high frequency sound so that is how we hear in a very simple way. The third part of the video is what are the different types of hearing loss? People come to an audiologist saying they have a problem in hearing. So the audiologist needs to understand which part of the ear is contributing to it and what is the nature of it so that he can understand, decide out which are the different interventions that can be done. The types of hearing loss can be classified into seven basic types based upon the part of the ear which is involved. The seven different types would be, as I explained, the external ear and the middle ear collect the sound and deliver it to the inner ear. So this two parts, external and middle ear, conduct sound and push it into the inner ear. Because of this, the loss which is contributed by the problems in the external ear or middle ear is referred to as conductive hearing loss. That's the first type of hearing loss. The next part of the ear is the inner ear and the cochlea is solely responsible for the purpose of hearing. If there is a issue with the cochlea, that is the cochlea cannot convert out sounds into adequate electrical impulses the type of hearing loss would be referred to as sensory hearing loss. There are hearing losses in which both the middle ear and the inner ear would be contributing. A part of it would be contributed by the external and the middle ear or the conductive mechanism and a part by the sensory mechanism. Such type of hearing loss is referred to as mixed hearing loss. So, Contribution by both the conductive mechanism and the sensory mechanism. The type of hearing loss is mixed hearing loss. The next comes in the auditory nerve. There can be various tumors and neuropathies because of which this auditory nerve may not faithfully carry the set of nerve impulses which have been converted by the cochlea. This type of hearing loss would be referred to as neural hearing loss. As the nerve impulses are delivered to the central auditory pathway processing happens at different level and as i said localization hearing and noise are important functions of this part of the auditory system known as the central auditory pathway any amount of hearing loss happening due to this part of the ear or the auditory system would be referred to as central auditory processing disorder or CAPD. Finally, the sound is delivered to the auditory cortex where it is analyzed out and meaning is given to it. So any amount of hearing loss contributed by poor processing at the auditory cortex would be referred to as cortical deafness. Thus, to respond to a sound like of this quality, the sound has to be carried in, delivered here, 
Here it is converted into electrical impulses carried by a nerve known as the auditory nerve or the eighth nerve delivered to this mechanism which processes out the sound and then it comes to the auditory cortex where a meaning is made that is at this level it's understood that this sound is produced by a squeaky toy and is a high frequency sound. There can be one more type of hearing loss in which the person either may not know that he is hearing it or may be pretending not to be hearing the sound and this type of hearing loss is known as the functional hearing loss. So in a functional hearing loss it may be either deliberately done or it may be done because the person doesn't know. Any damage at different levels are corresponding to different types of hearing loss and an audiologist has multiple tests to identify out these types of hearing loss. Hope you enjoyed the video and understood the different parts of the auditory system. How do we hear and the types of hearing loss?